Of course, at the beginning, they were they asked me to prepare questions. Uh, so I think as the as the session went on and everybody is becoming more comfortable, they were asking uh, more personal questions and more insightful questions. Uh, Singapore students need time to warm up, uh, but I encourage them, you know, uh, to be more open. I actually was expecting something more bolder and more questions that could be controversial. Mm, that wasn't asked, uh, but I can sense that uh, that respect they have for maybe uh, political leaders. Yeah, but I, I would say that the next session I go to anywhere else with the young people, I hope that they could be bold enough to ask questions. Uh. Mm. Okay, uh, do you think it's reflective of the sort of atmosphere like you were saying that they need to be in an environment in which they thrive in more in terms of this I get a sense that when they ask those questions, they actually want to do something different. They want to make a difference. They would also like to question status quo, but they just need that courage, that confidence uh, to be able to possibly take that first step. And they may want to hear from somebody, how do you do it? Because they keep asking, how do you, how do you educate or how do you teach someone to be a risk taker? You can't really teach, but what I can do is to encourage. Everybody know what risk-taking is about in your own specific field, respective industry, but it's about whether you're willing to take that step. And I'm trying to encourage them to take that step, challenge the status quo, that there's nothing wrong making a mistake. The issue we have today is society is just not so ready for failure. And you make that one small mistake and they think that everything is doomed, it's at the end of the world. We should not think that way. I think in many occasions when we fail, or we make a certain mistake, we just have to remind ourselves don't make the same mistake twice and learn from there and come out stronger and never give up. I think there are many lessons learned uh, and I hope that the students can see it and they are willing to take that step. Yes, and it's something I've read in articles saying that Singapore is not willing to set up towards a failure and a system for these businesses to thrive. I think we had a certain uh, entrepreneurial trend and culture some years ago. I think there were got a lot of people excited. Just like I've always been in business, I know that there was an era when everybody wanted to go regional. It was everything about it was about being regional. Then next come everything was about China, going to China, going to do business with them. Then next come was about uh, MNCs coming to Singapore. Then about entrepreneurship, everything, you know, everybody is keen to set up a certain business, get it going. After a while, it sort of uh, have a cooling period. Now, this also have a cooling period. This is a sort of a cool-off period where I thought uh, we should actually revitalize the entrepreneurship culture again, entrepreneurial culture again, because that is also a form of restaking. If we can encourage them to take ownership of uh, their own um, businesses or ventures or projects. Entrepreneurship is just one of them. Then I think that risk-taking culture can come up. With certain form of risk-taking, you actually could create ideas. You can become more innovative. And uh, that could give you a certain spark of brilliance later on that may create global champions that I mentioned. It may also bring companies even to a larger scale, a larger stage. The question is, are we ready for stepping out of comfort zone? And are they ready as well? I'm not sure if young people are ready. But uh, at this age, there are pressure for time. There's also family pressure. It's difficult to tell them to say, uh, take risks here and venture into that. But I think hopefully this doesn't carry with them all the way through into their adult life because hopefully it's only because of the environment they are in. But hopefully when they are growing up and going through our system and our process, there could be a greater environment, a better environment, more conducive ones to let them take risk, challenge the status quo. I think without that, Singapore would not improve. And we will not be ready for anything when something new comes up. And we won't be ready for challenges. Mm. What are the challenges you think that students are facing when they want to decide who they want to because it's like, I think that the government has been doing a lot of like, yeah. providing funds, startup funds, all that. So, why aren't they? Uh, what is the challenge? Uh, my view, lah. In my view, I think it's self confidence and stepping out of comfort zone. I don't think I think the environment is there. I think the encouragement is there. A um, the government support is there. I think it's the question of whether they have that confidence to want to take that step out of the comfort zone 
and uh, be ready, uh, be receptive towards whatever outcome. It could be failure, it could be success. But to be ready for the worst case scenario, I think maybe that uh, adaptability or that receptiveness towards failure is not there. Uh, so you see the situation today, everybody would just, just like to be status quo, stable and don't rock the boat. Nobody's really trying something new. I mean, there are people who try something new, but we need more. We need that environment to come up. We need that environment to actually be created and developed deeper and wider. We do have schemes and programs and other incentives, but uh, you don't get that kind of sense here compared to, say, maybe say Hong Kong or Taiwan, where I used to work there, I lived there as well, and uh, almost all my... I would say that the younger employees and uh, I would say the majority, and every time you ask them, they never say, I want to climb the corporate ladder in your company and then become CEO, but they will just say that, you know, I hope that one day I own my own business. And I say, is that what you're doing? They say, yeah, now I'm saving money. And a lot of them, when doing the appraisal, <laughs> they will tell me that, the, especially the smarter ones, the ones that perform well. So whenever I give them projects uh, within the company, I have to make it very entrepreneurial. It's like, I set you a budget and you just do what you want. And you just grow it as long as you generate for me revenue. It's an intrapreneurship within a company. That kind of spirit is actually almost a survival mode. Eh? And you can sense that in them. Do we do that? Do we sense that in Singapore? I think I would say to a lesser extent. What we can do is to expand that, build it deeper, encourage them. That um, in business or in anything you do, uh, in order to achieve a higher excellence, a uh, greater skill, risk-taking is part and parcel of the process. Uh. So do you think that from when and what age are you going to create this kind of spirit? Uh, our education system is already so... Uh, it's rather tight on their time and pressure. I think if you ask me... Um, we don't have that kind of environment in Singapore. We're very stable. That's why they don't get a sense of urgency nor that need to question status quo, right? Uh, because it's a structured system, very disciplined, which is fine. Uh, if you really want to create that, you can start them young. Uh, start them at the age where they understand about the threats that Singapore is facing, the external economy's threat, the external competition. Because Singapore is under threat every day, competitively, in the economic sense, and uh, the other different cities are coming up, businesses, corporate as well. So when they get a when they get an understanding of this sense of threat and uh, weaknesses in our own society and country as well, then I think that's a time where you want to tell them how important their role is in going through this path, in going through this journey of taking risks and uh, making a difference and creating a spark of brilliance, even if possible creating global champions, and then I think they will have that drive. I think this will be at a time where, I think at this age, in JC, in Poly, even slightly before that, I think they would have uh, they would have that ability to understand and appreciate the environment we are in, and I think that's the time where we should inculcate in them. I couldn't say that in the kindergarten you, you teach them, I don't think they, they have any understanding, you know, so I don't think so. But if we can also, at a very early age, instead of putting their money in savings, we can put their money in investment and teach them that there's some form of investment, a certain risk, and you lose some, you win some. I think that's also one way to start off if you want, really want to start them new, which I'm doing to my children. <laughs> and there's an impact, you know. That's an impact because they are learning. And I realized my children were learning in, along that way. And to them, was everything seems to be worth a try. Yeah, it, it actually affects their approach. So actually, my daughter end up with doing CCS like rock climbing or that, you know, doing all this. But the thing is that you have to shift their focus to understand why you are doing this. You are doing this because you think you can make a difference later. You know, it's part of learning process. Yeah.